Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you my home hi-fi system. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for a number of years, but every time I went to go film it, I would say, let me just wait until that last component arrives and then I don't end up filming the video. Well, after a lot of collecting, I finally have all of the components in the system that I want to show to you. And for me, being an audiophile means it sounds good, it looks good, and it has a lot of different physical media. I really like collecting different types of media, anything from open reel to cassette, to vinyl and even digital audio tape, which are off camera over there. So yeah, I've been building this system for about four years now, ever since I moved into this apartment. Some of the components are used from eBay or pickups from Craigslist or even a crazy drive down to Los Angeles. And uh, I'm just excited to show it to the world. So without further delay, let's get started. First up is my Marantz NR1508 audio receiver amplifier. This is a 5.1 channel receiver with 85 watts per channel. This is plenty for my small living room and frankly most setups. I went for this specific model because it is shorter than most big box amplifiers and still packs a ton of features. Since I have more inputs than this receiver can offer, I do my switching externally. I prefer this because it lets me route the signal through any recording devices or spectrum analyzers before reaching the amplifier. Next up I have a Marantz BD5004 Blu-ray player. I scored this one secondhand from eBay, and I use it to play both Blu-ray movies and compact discs. It does a great job at that. There really isn't much to say about this other than the fact that it gets the job done. I may consider a discrete CD player in the future for more programmability on the front panel, but otherwise this has been a solid choice that matches the front face of my amplifier above it. Next up is perhaps the first interesting component in my setup. This is a Sony DTC690 digital audio tape deck. For those of you who don't know DAT, this is a format that holds 48kHz, 16-bit stereo audio on magnetic tape. This is a really fascinating format that exceeds the specifications of compact disc. I have an older video on my channel where I was actually able to encode HD video into the audio portion of this tape format. Really fun. This is a mid-level deck that supports most of the common features but does not permit recording analog audio in the 44.1kHz sample rate. It does, however, support recording 44.1 kHz sample rates from digital sources. An odd limitation from Sony, but not really a big deal. Here we have a beautiful Audio-Technica ATLP1240 vinyl turntable. This is actually one of my oldest pieces of gear, second only to my amplifier, and the story of how I purchased it is pretty funny. I was shopping at a Fry's Electronics and spotted this thing sitting on the shelf. I assumed it would be way outside of my price range, and this was confirmed when I looked at prices on Amazon. Somehow, this one was severely marked down, so I snagged it right away and was really, really happy with the purchase. This was a great way to start my collection of physical media and playback devices, and was quite an upgrade over the previous turntable that I had. It has a number of features including adjustable playback speed, support for 33, 45, and 78 RPM records, and is a beltless setup, reducing any maintenance requirements over time. So I think this was a really great purchase to include in my setup. Next up is my digital FM radio, a Sanjin HDT20. This is a really cool device that can decode digital HD radio, which is popular here in the US. The format uses an in-band sideband transmission of a digital encoding of the analog audio on the primary, and then additional secondary digital channels. I'm a huge fan of this technology, so it only made sense for me to add a receiver to my setup. This unit has a digital output, which can be copied bit perfectly using any of my digital recorders, including the DAT deck that we saw earlier. Here is my Akai EAA7 graphic equalizer. This is a digital equalizer and program route selector that offers two record loops. The display on this unit is particularly nice looking and offers a fun visualization of the music being played back. This one comes with a recommendation from Tecmon and definitely lives up to the hype. This is my current favorite format and piece of gear in my setup. This is a Pioneer RT909 open reel recorder. I produced an entire video about this one if you want to see more, but I'll share some of the details here. This is an extremely rare example which is anodized in black. It has been professionally restored and recapped. The sound quality is exceptional and I am really proud to have this unique gem in my collection. I have been told that these black models were only sold to the US military. I have been enjoying creating mixtapes, learning about different tape formulations, and how the format works in my spare time. Really fascinating stuff. If you want to see more about this, check out the other video. This next device is purely eye candy. This is a fun generation RTA31 audio spectrum analyzer. It is a simple device that passes analog audio through, but provides a 31 band spectrum analyzer view of the audio playing through it. Definitely fun to watch. 
I will be adding a desk rack to this setup to conceal the rack mounting ears of this component and mounting a couple of others. I just got impatient and decided to make this video before it arrived, but it doesn't look that bad. The next device in my setup is a program route selector from DBX, the 200XG. This device is daisy chained off of the tape 2 record loop on my Akai equalizer to allow three more record and playback devices. It is a passive device requiring no power, simple enough. Between this and my other equalizer, I can route audio from any source to any record device in my setup. Next is the most recent addition to my collection, a Sony TC K690 cassette deck. Interestingly, this model number makes this a companion to my DTC 690, but in analog instead of digital. This is a full soft-touched motorized tape deck. It offers biasing and level control, support for HX Pro, Dolby B and C noise reduction, as well as music search for skipping tracks on tapes. Quite a nice piece of gear. My next piece of gear is a Tascam SS R250N solid state recorder. This device allows playing and recording high resolution audio from flash drives and SD memory cards. I have been using this to play back lossless WAV files to create my mixtapes on OpenReel and DAT. It has both digital and analog input and output, so it is extremely versatile. I could have used a computer, but I like the idea of being able to conveniently configure input and output and have a permanent device in my installation for interacting with digital audio in this way. No messing about with config files here. And finally, last but not least, my XM satellite radio. This is a Polk Audio XRT12, which is the only XM radio that I am aware of with SPDIF output. This is great for recording onto DAT tape a bit-perfect copy of music for archival and playback later. These are also very cheap on eBay, ranging from $30 to around $100, depending on the condition that you are willing to tolerate. I think XM Satellite Radio is a nice way to discover new music, and so I'm happy to have a receiver in my setup. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of my home hi-fi system. As you can see, I've put a lot of effort into this over the years. I've really had a lot of fun learning about the different formats, and I have a couple of YouTube videos about some of the tricks and things I've done with these components over the years, so feel free to go check those out. I don't really have anything else to say about this system other than the fact that I just really enjoy using it. Every once in a while I'll put on some music and maybe have a nice drink and just relax on the couch. It's always a nice way to end the day. If you want to see more from me, feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you liked this video, please like. It definitely motivates me to do this more. And if you have any questions about any of the components that you see here, or maybe you have the same in your setup, definitely leave a comment below. I read all of them and I definitely reply when I think there's something worth replying to. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. And so with that, I will see you next time.